water our earth looks blue when we see it from space it is because of presence of large amount of water in the form of ocean the earth looks very beautiful and looks like a blue ball a glance at the world map or a globe will show that land areas do not stretch continuously on the globe but the oceans completely encircle the continents and islands they spread over 71% of the total area over the globe while land areas occupy only 29% of the earth water cycle water is an integral part of our life and found in all the three forms solid liquid and gaseous we can't survive without water water is a renewable source which gets renewed continuously through water cycle or hydrological cycle the water enters the atmosphere from the oceans through evaporation in the form of water vapor then the process of condensation takes place which includes the conversion of water vapor back to water due to cooling which leads to precipitation in the form of rain or snow that process repeats again and again this never ending movement of water is called the water cycle our earth is like a terrarium the same water that existed centuries ago still exists today water may be fresh or saline the major sources of fresh water are the rivers ponds springs and glaciers the oceans and the seas contain salty water which is not fit for human consumption seas and oceans mainly act as a means of transport distribution of water about 71% of the earth is covered with water still we face the problem of water scarcity the reason is that the large quantity or about 97.3% water of the earth is found in oceans which is saline and can't be used for drinking purpose only 2.7% water is fresh or usable for human beings very low quantity of fresh water is available on earth which is absolutely essential for our survival without water we can't live about more than 2 days so we should use this precious and limited resource very carefully and make sure there is no wastage of water oceans oceans are the largest water bodies found on the surface of the earth in order of their size they are the pacific ocean the atlantic ocean the indian ocean and the arctic ocean the pacific ocean it is the largest and deepest ocean which covers 1/3 of the globe it is estimated that it covers an area of about 1668 crore 84 lakh 38059 kilometers its average depth is 4200 meter its basin contains high and abrupt ridges deep trenches volcanic mountains etc mariana trench is the deepest point on the earth which is located on the western side of the pacific ocean the pacific ocean has a string of volcanoes along the coastal margins of the continents the atlantic ocean it is smaller and shallower than the pacific ocean it is s shaped and has many ridges remarkable canyons and gorges on its basin it separates europe and africa from the north america and south america it is mainly characterized by the presence of a long submarine ridge in the middle of the atlantic ocean which is known as the dolphin ridge in the north atlantic and the challenger ridge in the south atlantic ocean it is the busiest ocean in the world the indian ocean it is small in size but has an average depth of 4000 meter it lies to the south of india west of indonesia australia and east of africa the indian ocean is dotted about with thousands of small islands some of which are of coral formation for example the maldives and cocos islands arctic ocean it is the smallest of the world's ocean centering approximately on the north pole a narrow stretch of water called bering strait connects it with the pacific ocean it is bordered by greenland canada alaska russia and norway temperature of ocean water the temperature of the ocean water varies from place to place it varies 
between 23 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius in the tropical zone, but it decreases towards the poles, where it is about 2.2 degrees Celsius. The temperature at the surface of ocean is high. The water grows colder with increasing depth. At great depth, the water is very cold. Near the poles, it is nearly freezing everywhere. Salinity of ocean water Salinity means the degree of saltness of the oceans and seas. It is the amount of salt in grams present in 1000 grams of water. The average salinity of the ocean is 35% per thousand. It varies from place to place depending upon rate of evaporation, the amount of fresh water added by rivers and rainfall. Salinity is not beneficial as it makes ocean water unfit for human beings. Movement of ocean water Ocean water is not of direct use to humans because it is salty or saline, yet it is useful in many other ways. It modifies the high temperature of summer and the low temperatures of winter. Oceans are never still. They are always in movement and restless. There are three major movements in ocean water. Waves, tides and current. Waves. When the water on the surface of the ocean rises and falls alternately, they are called waves. This rise and fall of water is rhythmic in nature. The raised part of the wave is called crest and the lower part is called trough. The distance between two crests is known as wavelength. Waves are caused by the pushing action of the wind. When the wind velocity is high, the waves are also very high. They are felt only at the surface and not at the depth. They vary in size and height according to the strength of the winds. During a storm, the winds blow at a very high speed, thus forming huge waves which may cause destruction. Tsunami waves Tsunami is a Japanese word which means harbour waves. These are huge waves created by an earthquake, a volcanic eruption or under water landslide. These huge tidal waves may be as high as 15 meter. These waves travel at a speed of more than 700 kilometers per hour. These waves cause great destruction of life and property at coastal areas. The tsunami of 2004 caused widespread damage in the coastal areas of India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Maldives. Tides The alternate rise and fall in the waters of the ocean twice in about 24 hours are known as tides. Tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and to some extent by the pull of the sun. Anyone who has lived near a seashore must have noticed that there is some connection between the moon and the tides. Types of tides Tides are of two types, high tides and low tides. High tide The water of the earth closer to the moon gets pulled under the influence of the moon's gravitational force and causes a high tide. During a high tide, ocean water rises in the tidal belt and rushes in towards the land and floods it. Low tide It is during low tide when water falls to its lowest level and recedes from the shore. Along most coastal areas, the sea rises two times and falls two times a day. Spring tide During the full moon and the new moon day, the sun, the moon and the earth are in the same line and the sun's gravitational pull gets added to that of the moon. During these times, the tides are highest. These tides are called spring tides. Neap tide At the time of the first and the last quarters of the moon, the sun and the moon are at right angles to each other in relation to the earth. The ocean water gets drawn in diagonally opposite directions by the gravitational pull of the sun and water falls to its lowest level and recedes from the shore. This is called a neap tide. Uses of tide Tides are very helpful in various ways, like tides help in navigation. They help to keep harbour clean by carrying away sewage and waste from the coastline. They raise the water level close to the shores, which helps the ships to arrive at the harbour more easily. The high tide helps in fishing 
as more fish come closer to the shore during the high tide tidal energy can be harnessed to generate electricity ocean currents the regular movements of water from one part of the ocean to another are called ocean currents these are streams of water flowing constantly on the ocean surface in definite directions they are mainly caused by the difference in density of sea water due to variations in temperature and salinity the prevailing winds push them onwards types of ocean currents the ocean currents may be warm or cold the currents which originate near the equator and move towards the poles are called warm ocean currents whereas cold ocean currents originate near the poles and flow towards the equator the cold currents carry water from polar regions to tropical areas for example labrador current at the coast of northwest america is a cold current and the gulf stream which flows through the coast of mexico and western america is a warm ocean current effect of ocean currents ocean currents modify the climate of the coastal regions along which they flow cold currents decrease the temperature whereas the warm currents increase the temperature of the area from where they flow the winds passing over the warm currents pick up moisture and bring rain the areas where the warm and cold currents meet provide the best fishing grounds of the world the sea areas around japan and the eastern coast of north america are such examples but sometimes they cause great destruction due to forming of dense fog ocean currents affect navigation as these currents help to sail ships faster if they follow in the direction of the current